subcontractors. So take a look at that as you're passing to and fro in, in the hallway here, right, right here at this side. Um, we also have uh, some government leaders with us. Uh, Bob Beck, uh, supervisor for Des Moines County. Bob. And I'm not exactly sure when this takes place, Jerry, but Jerry Kearns is retiring from the state legislature, and he's a representative out of Kansas. Jerry Kearns. And I, again, just want to point out our contractors, and I, I, I so appreciate their willingness to work with us and to work together to accomplish this type of magnificent structure. And, and with this building, that it completes our health sciences complex. So that's pretty exciting that we've been able to put that all together. And DLR has been our uh, uh, architect of record, and we so appreciate that we've had a number of different architects, but, but Mike is uh, the one carrying the ball now and has for the last uh, good period of time. So thank you, Mike, for all of that. We also have many NCC faculty and staff here, along with our administration. Would you all stand? The faculty and staff, would you stand, please? And, as I said, it's all about the students. So we do have some students. We're not, this is summer, so it's really hard to get students to come to school. <laughs> when it's like really hot outside and you want to get somewhere to school? I don't think so. But we do have some, and uh, there's, a, there's a couple, three that are in white uh, pullovers, polos, and Remington, and there she is hiding behind that sun, <laughs> and, and then Emily Jacobs. So if you would stand, these are our president's leadership. <laughs> So they are President of Leadership Academy students, and we have about eight or ten students that, that uh, work together in that program, and uh, it's just a joy to work with, with uh, each of those students, so we appreciate them. But we also have, uh, do we have any science students here? I know we have a graduate. Did I see a hand back there? No. Someone was volunteering something. <laughs> Okay, well, we do have a graduate, and she's going to speak to you in a little bit, and uh, she's a delight. Uh, are there any other students here? We have a nursing student here who's gone back to school. Anyone else? Okay. All right, so we have, uh, we've started on this journey called Building the Dream. And uh, this was uh, a brainchild of uh, three or four of us that got together and started talking about a theme for our uh, effort. And uh, Jeff Ebbing, where is Jeff at? He's over here taking some pictures, and Becky Rump right next to him. And myself, we, we started bouncing around ideas, and we came up with this Building the Dream. So we've been building the dream for the last four years, and what an incredible journey that's been. And now we're beginning to live with the dream. And it it's pretty exciting that we're able to do that as well. So I want to thank Jeff and Becky for all of you. So we started with collecting data. Now, they had already begun that process before I got here, so that was nothing new when we started talking about doing that. So they, they put together some, uh, some data, and they collected some things, but we, we circled the wagons, we got a little bit more data, a little bit more information, and then we sat down with an architectural firm. At the time, it wasn't DLR, it was another group, and they helped us to develop a master plan. And that master plan is what we're putting into place here on this campus, and in, in Keokuk as well. So, um, they've been helping us with that, but we've had to dream the dream. They'll, they'll come up with ideas, but we have to kind of guide them and direct them. 
uh, as far as what, uh, what our dream is and what we're trying to accomplish. And then we took that notion and we started talking to others and that's presenting the concepts, if you will. And we did a lot of those kind of con conceptual meetings and presentations and basically I got tired of hearing myself talking about the concept. And, and, and yet you have to share the concept, you have to share what are you trying to do here, what are you trying to accomplish. And, and so we did that. We did that, tried to do that as faithfully as possible. But it was like, what are we going to get after this thing anyway? And so we did uh, start moving dirt. And this building uh, right, uh, right next to us is the Health Profession Building, and that was finished. And our first classes were held there in the fall of 2016. And then we were still looking at still other things that we wanted to build and to, uh, to add to the campus. But we had to start with a dream. We had to start with an idea. The idea then uh, developed into a concept. We shared that concept. People grabbed hold of that. They, they found a way to be supportive. They found ways to help us, to guide us in, their, uh, in, in our efforts to accomplish that. And today we sit here having now finished and completed the health science complex. And so we're really excited about being able to have our sciences in this building and to be able to have these two buildings very closely connected with our skywalk and, and in close proximity. And we're very happy about all of that. But it has been a journey. It's not been easy. And I have a slogan that I bandy around here at the campus. And it's, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but I'm going to tell you it's going to be worth it. So guests, students, faculty, staff, would, would you say that it's worth it? We've had some tremendous leadership on these projects and on this particular one, and I, I want to just, again, acknowledge a few people. First of all, I want to publicly acknowledge again Becky Rong and um, Julie Glasgow, Sherry Zeller, who is way at the back. I think she got the last seat back there. <laughs> By the way, Sherry is retiring. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So don't go there with me. Okay. <laughs> And I just want to see a grown man cry. <laughs> so, Sherry is in the back, but Becky, Julie, uh, Sherry, Jeff, what a team of people, professionals that have done such a tremendous job of helping, guiding, directing, correcting, uh, giving ideas, inputs. Uh, other people, Chuck Christman, who is running our camera here, and his team of IT professionals. Uh, I'm telling you, these are service people. They, whatever it is, they jump on it and they get it done. They, they're not, uh, and I say this to Chuck often, that he's a can-do sort of guy. It's not a, oh, that won't work. Can't do that, can't do this, can't do, no, he's a, he makes it happen. And his team is just <laughs> uh, And you'll see on the monitors here in the hallway, we have some, some uh, pictures being displayed. And these are pictures that have been taken throughout uh, the uh, building process. So while we don't have a video of it, we do have some, uh, a lot, uh, some shots, some pictures that uh, if you stand and watch it long enough, you'll see a building being built. So we, we thank uh, Chuck and his team, as, as well as Jeff on that. Byron Whittlesey, if you don't know Byron, you need to get to met, uh, meet this guy. He is something else. He has turned this campus on its ear, and we really, really do appreciate it. And of course, he's got a great crew, too. They are hard workers. Wayne, I don't know if Wayne's still around here, but he, he was here. But uh, we, we so appreciate that. Then uh, Kim Tracy, I, I don't know that Kim's here, but Kim helps us with the programs and the printing and all those kind of fun things, and she's just got a creative mind, and we just so appreciate her. Pam Peterson, who's in the back, um, she handles all of our mail services, as well as works with Becky and, and with uh, Julie uh, in the uh, advancement office, so we appreciate them as well. And then, finally, but not the least of which, is Kevin Carr and his team. What, what a crew they have, and he has, and the kind of work that they've done, and that incorporates 
uh, of a lot of people, but certainly brings into play uh, Byron Whittlesey and uh, Dave Metzger, who was with us uh, throughout this project. So uh, they, they, they got a whole slew of people, so I, I will probably uh, leave somebody out and, and uh, feel badly about that. And then our Vice President for Academic Affairs, and she gets to oversee all of this. Uh, she's in the back, Dr. Carol Richardson, and just finished a major project uh, called the Systems Portfolio as part of our um, accreditation process. And she has overseen that process, and it's, uh, you, 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 we, we invite you to read it, but when you, when you do read it, you're going to find such quality in writing and programming. And that was supported by, again, some other people like Becky Rohn. And, and Julie Meyer out of uh, Keokuk, and Dr. Janet Shepard, who is one of our latest additions to the staff. And what, what a dynamic team that has been. And we just so appreciate all that they've done to help us grow and develop in the field. <laughs> and while she's here, I saw her in the back. Amber, are you here? Where are you at, Amber? Amber, where are you? She's probably in a lab someplace doing some type of experiment. She's up here. Oh, oh, oh. She's, here. She's, she's, she's up there. Okay. <laughs> well, we try to have some kind of fun here, right? Now. But, but Amber Russell Lamar was uh, the department chair for our math sciences when we began to even discuss this building. And so she had such uh, valuable uh, perspective and input and time that she gave to us to guide us through this process. So Amber, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Too. I also want to, and, and this is part of Chuck's team, but also want to acknowledge Richard Bomsley, Rob Ryan, Ray Cunningham, Nick Williams, Carrie Mercer, who's up there, and Richard up there, um, Paula Meyer. She's back there. And down here someplace. And in the back, doing the wave thing. Okay. And uh, Bruce uh, uh, Huddleston, who could not be here tonight, but was here earlier today in making this evening possible with the various technologies. I mean, these are the technology gurus of the campus, so they can make things happen. So, <laughs> also, I want to give a special recognition to Richard and to Rob for um, discovering, if you will, the 3D program that we have purchased and put into place up here. Uh, and and you, we invite you to come take a look at it. It's in the STEM room just above you on the second floor. And, and it's pretty impressive, uh, pretty exciting, and we're really appreciative of uh, both um, Richard and Rob for finding that software. Now, I want to give uh, a special thank you to Mike Chin. Uh, he's a graduate of SEC and a real believer in what we're doing. He, he willingly stepped up to provide the leadership to our Building the Dream campaign. Before we ask him to come, I'd like to have all those in this audience who helped us with raising funds for our Building the Dream campaign, would you please stand? Our, our goal was $12 million, and our um, different people didn't think that was feasible, reachable, doable. They thought that was crazy. Uh, not going to happen in Burlington. But I'm here to report to you that we are nearing that $12 million goal in capital campaign dollars. But in addition to the $11.6 million that has been raised, we've taken in another $5 million plus 
in new scholarship dollars. So as you can see, this is this is really exciting. I I just got a little bit of a chill there because I I have a hard time when people say you can't do that. You'll never do that. Because that sort of encourages me to do that. So, but it takes a team, and that's what we've had, and we've had to have a leader. And our leader is Mike Shed. So I'd like Mike to come and say a few words, Mike. sitting in my chair thinking, as Dr. Ash mentioned, I am uh, an SEC graduate, and if I had taken science classes in this building, I got the feeling my GPA would have been a little bit better. <laughs> so I'm not sure who I need to talk to about that, but uh, I'm do some retrofitting there. Uh, Dr. Ash said, my name is Mike Shin. I work with uh, Rick Bowler Financial Services, and it's been uh, my extreme pleasure to serve on the Building the Dream campaign. I work with numbers a lot. Um, in, in my line of work, and I think a great story can be told uh, through some of the numbers that have been experienced through this campaign, some of which Dr. Ash has, has shared, um, but I think they're worth uh, sharing again. The Building the Dream campaign has currently raised around $11.6 million of the $12 million goal, with an additional $5 million in new scholarships. The increased support internally uh, through SEC has been tremendous with over 100% growth in participation and an almost 500% increase in dollars raised through employee giving. I think that says a lot. Uh, it's one thing, you know, the community obviously has rallied around this project and around this dream, but also internally, um, staff and faculty have all bought in as well. Building the Dream saw 460 new donors contributing over $6.3 million throughout the campaign. All in all, Building the Dream helped the foundation assets grow to over $24 million. Currently, our foundation ranks second in highest assets per student among the 15 Iowa community colleges. Honestly, it's hard to look at some of the statistics and not be in a little bit of awe. Under the leadership of Becky and Dr. Ash, Building the Dream has helped prepare our community college, future success, and the ability to serve Southeast Iowa for many years to come. So now that you've heard a little bit of the numbers, I'd like to celebrate some of the people behind them. We have recognized these individuals previously, but I don't think you can say enough, and I would love to recognize a few of them again. First is Dr. Jerry Jockins. Dr. Jockins was tireless and relentless and steady uh, during the Building the Dream campaign. And um, frankly, it was, there was no meeting that went by that he didn't have some exciting news to report. So if you would, please give Dr. Jockins a <laughs> Next, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Mr. John Schultz. John was a uh, key in connecting us to several area businesses and um, in his own right uh, was a, 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 a very prominent contributor to the Building New Dream campaign. Would you please recognize him? <laughs> and finally, and certainly not least, I would like to, like to recognize Lisa Nafziger, Amy O'Brien and Teresa Colgan from Great River Health Systems. They worked inside and outside the health system to ensure a successful outcome for this campaign. Would you give them a round of applause? Those are the volunteers, but I also like to 
recognize Dr. Ash and Becky one more time. If it wasn't for their leadership, their passion, and their vision, um, none of this would have ever got off the ground. So Finally, I'd like to thank all of you who support the college in so many ways. Obviously, we're here to, to celebrate some new facilities and some, some capital dollars that have been raised, but I know there's so many things that go to supporting SEC. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you who do that. One of the things that I love to hear when Dr. Ash speaks is he always talks about how this is our community college. It is such a blessing to have such a great community college in our area. And I so much appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. And uh, he, he and his wife are going to slip out here. They have another engagement, so they're not mad at me. Or <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> The next person that's going to come is, is going to bring some uh, words to you from our board. Chris Browitz, Chair of our board. Good evening. On behalf of the SEC Board of Trustees, I would like to extend a welcome to each of you. Donors, community leaders, administration, faculty, staff, and students. This is an exciting moment for the college and all who have an association with it, along with our community. The support of the various foundation, businesses, industries, along with private gifts have been a huge asset. This building is a testament of community involvement and support to Southeastern Community College. Tonight, as you can see, you are among fellow friends who share your desire to support SEC and the product we produce, students and future employees. Indicators of that support can be seen by the many donor nameplates located above room signs, in the public spaces, and on the beautiful cement exterior benches. Support can be seen in the names etched on the donor bricks in our new honor garden, co-created by Country Landscapes and Ritter's Landscaping, and also on the base of the monument honoring the Lawrence and Marilyn Matson family, whose family has given so much to this college. the many efforts come together to produce this facility for our students to study and for our faculty to share their knowledge and insights. I want to once again thank you for your support and participation in the creation of the Hall of Sciences. And since it's about the students, we've invited uh, the president of our student board, Emily Jacobs. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for attending this event tonight and to say how much of an honor it is to be speaking with you publicly. I've thought of many different ways to start my speech, but I think I'd take the easy route and just introduce myself and tell you about where I came from. My name is Emily Jacobs, and last fall I started my career at SCC taking the Automotive Collision Repair Program. And let me tell you, it has been probably one of the greatest life decisions I've made thus far. The automotive industry has always been something I have looked into greatly ever since I was a kid. Growing up, my father worked at one of our local shops, Rods Automotive, in New London, Iowa. And just watching him grow up, work around there, it's 
been something that drew me into it really well. And to be able to come here and be close to home and take these courses is something that's really amazing to me. And with that, I've been able to learn so many new things in my life and just take my life to new destinations, find what I want to do and just get out there and lead not only the way for the automotive industry, but for females in the automotive industry and mechanical bodywork as well. I would not be able to be here right now if it wasn't for Mr. and Mrs. Mattson with their wonderful scholarship that was able to help me cover a lot of my funding for being here and doing what I love to do. But before I get into anything further, I'd like to direct you to the monument just outside the building here. The monument you see outside is not only a representation of the colleges itself, but the buildings and the Madison family. If it wasn't for the Madison family, a lot of this would not be possible. The DNA strand that you see is not only representative for this, but it embodies just the staff, the students, and the community. Between the strands of the helix is a steel chain that is representative of Mr. Mattson himself with his previous occupations of being an iron worker and doing his own dredging company. And then the DNA strand itself embodies us. And to have that connection of the DNA strand between the ironworks, it shows the tight bond between us and our community as well as us with the Madisons. Again, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming tonight and to thank the Madisons themselves personally for all they do for us and for us to be able to give back to them in such a way like this. about the students. <laughs> yes, one of our students. Thank you, Emily. Now, um, the name on this building is the John H. Whitty Jr. Hall of Sciences. And every gift is important. Every gift. And we've said that how many times? Maybe? Over and over again. Whether it's a dollar or whether it's millions of dollars. But the very first group that we approached on this journey that we we're getting ready to start was the Witte Foundation. So we've asked Terry Dowell, who is chair of the John H. Witte Jr. Foundation, to come and say a few words and introduce. Did Dave make it here, Dave? Yep, it okay, good. So she'll, she'll introduce her board, and but Terry Dowell from the foundation. Well, first of all, I would like to um, introduce the board for the Witty Foundation. Um, they do a wonderful job. We have a lot of money that we have to distribute to the community, which is a wonderful thing, and it's a true honor. But I would like to honor them here today. We have Dave Babrock and Ryan Schulte. Uh, good evening, my name is Terry Dowell and I'm the Vice President and the Managing Director for the Wealth Management side of U.S. Bank. In my role at U.S. Bank, I have the extreme pleasure of managing the Johnny Chewitty Jr. Foundation. Unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to know Mr. Whitty personally, but what I've been told by others is that he was a humble man with boundless energy. <coughs> John H. Whitty was born on December 6, 1984. He first entered the family paint business after graduating from Burlington High School in 1901. Always wanting to improve his mind, he soon found it necessary to attend the University of Iowa. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1910 and was initiated into the Phi Beta Kappa Honorary Scholastic Fraternity. fraternity. He later became a registered pharmacist. John began working in his father's chain of drugstores, which he and his brother operated for many years. 
This business was expanded into a very, very profitable paint manufacturing plant under the name of John H. Woody and Sons. By the mid-1920s, the partnership of John H. Woody and Sons was a powerful force in Burlington. Brother William had taken over the paint manufacturing side of the business, and John was now free to concentrate on the investment side. Mr. Woody became a successful participant in the buying and selling of commodities, particularly those in the manufacturing of paint and varnish. He also became very active in the establishment of the First National Bank in Burlington, now known as U.S. Bank, and served as the chairman of the board. Astronomy was a hobby of Mr. Witte. When he built his home near Crable Park, he specified that the roof be flat to accommodate his 8-inch refractory telescope that he later donated to the Des Moines County Conservation. It is currently being housed at the Witte Observatory Complex at Big Hollow Recreation Area. John H. Witte believed in sharing his wealth. He valued education and the sciences and left a legacy when he created a philanthropic foundation at his death in 1978, at the age of 94. Over the past 38 years, the Woody Foundation has given over $10 million to hundreds of charitable causes in the Burlington area. In October of 2014, the John H. Woody Foundation Board was, approved, was approached by Dr. Ash and Becky Rump asking us to consider making that first lead gift for SEC's Building the Dream campaign. The board felt that by making the lead gift from the foundation, it would truly embrace John A. Sweetie's passion and support of higher education, especially in the field of science. The board unanimously, unanimously approved a gift of $1 million to help fund the new science lab and classroom facility at SEC. In 2001, a memorial was established for John H. Woody Jr. The stainless steel sculpture that was located at the former U.S. Bank downtown has been moved out to the northwest corner of the Hall of Sciences building here at Southeastern Community College, and you will be seeing it shortly. This new location will continue to honor Mr. Woody as a generous man who has made dreams become realities and ideas become achievements in our community. Through the generosity of John H. Woody Jr. and others of these wonderful donors, we are making a real difference in the lives of students here at Southeastern Community College. Thank you. So our first lead gift was a yes, and I think it took them all about 45 minutes. <laughs> we, we thought it might be days, um, and Beck and I got back to the office, and we were like, well, I don't know how that went well. We, did, we thought it went well, we just didn't know, and then we got a call from Terry, and wow, that is great, it's off the ceiling. We were so excited. So thank you, Terry. Brian, Dave, so very, very much. We appreciate all of your support in that regard. Now, the next individual I've asked to come and speak uh, was a faculty member in the sciences uh, and was on the ground floor of talking about the classrooms and what was needed. He was a, was a physics, and physics instructor, and he has now since moved into being the dean of arts and sciences, Dr. Chris Sedlak. Chris? Good evening. Um, I want to start by thanking all of the donors and other uh, honored guests who were able to come here today, especially the Madsons and the representatives of the Witte Foundation. But I'd also like to thank uh, all the donors who aren't here today, and your program lists many, many individuals, both within the SEC community and the surrounding area. 
Um, I'm here to say a few words on behalf of, but also in praise of, the science faculty uh, here at SCC. Uh, it was my honor to uh, serve with them as physics instructor for 12 years here at SCC, um, and now I'm the Dean of Arts and Sciences. I made the move just in time to miss being able to teach in this beautiful new building. So I'm a little jealous of them, to be honest. Uh, I say I worked with them, but sadly, in some sense, did not work alongside them. Um, one of the challenges with our old facilities for sciences is there was really not a single place on campus that was the sciences altogether. They were kind of almost spread out as far as they could be. So um, I think that this new facility is going to be great for allowing our science faculty to collaborate with one another and really develop some new and exciting uh, activities that can draw in students and have an identity uh, for our science department. Um, as I said, we have really high quality faculty here at SCC in the sciences. I put them up against any other science faculty anywhere. And the great thing is now we have a building to match. There you go. <laughs> As Dr. Ash mentioned, um, this is all about the students. And the title of this campaign has been Building the Dream. But in a way, I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. Really what we are doing is we're building dreams. We are building the dreams of the student who wants to get a better job, perhaps in industrial maintenance. We're building the dream of the student who wants to become a nurse so that she can, or he, can uh, serve the community and help people in their time of greatest pain and suffering. We are building the dreams of engineers who want to go on to then build more uh, buildings, build more bridges, design new uh, <laughs> software that will make the lives of the people around them better. We're building the dreams of a student who wants to become a scientist to uh, push the boundaries of human knowledge and uh, explore the frontiers of what we know and what we can do. Um, this building is part of that. The Health Sciences Building is part of that, the Industrial Maintenance Facility in Keokuk. All that is part of building the dreams of our students. This building features more and better lab spaces, spaces that are purpose-built for the uh, disciplines where the instruction is occurring. Uh, and that, as a scientist, is a great benefit uh, for student learning and it allows you to do all the things that you really want to do for the students to make their education as good as it can be. So uh, I hope you all are as excited about this new facility as I am. I want to thank you again for your donations, your support, the work that you've done to uh, get this Hall of Sciences together. Thank you. Now we're going to hear from another, she's not really a student any longer, she went ahead and graduated, but she's a science graduate. So she graduated uh, this past May from SEC's uh, science program. So welcome, Brittany Workman. Brittany? excited to be joining me here today. I remember when they first announced the Hall of Sciences, I just mapped in my head and found out that I would in fact be opening the year after I graduated from SEC and that I wouldn't even be taking any classes in here. So I'm very excited to be here today because I actually get a chance to see it now. I just graduated from SEC in the spring, as Dr. Ash said, with my associate's of science degree. I will be transferring to the University of Iowa in the fall for either chemical or civil engineering. I remember coming up to SEC in elementary school for the College for Kids Summer Enrichment Program. I participated for several summers, and each year I took different classes. 
However, every year there was always one science class that I loved so much, I took it each and every summer. We always got to make baking soda volcanoes in the biology labs, and I absolutely loved it. I had some very vivid memories from the labs up here on your campus. When I returned to SEC as a college student, not much had changed in the years that had passed. I chose SEC after high school because I was not ready to move away from home, nor had I decided on a major. SEC was close, affordable, and allowed me to stay at home and continue working while I made some decisions on schooling in my future. In my time here, I've taken chemistry 1 and 2 and physics 1 and 2, along with other math classes and electives. The science labs are functioning, but they fail in comparison to the other labs and other universities. The labs are also very scattered, as Dr. Sedlak was saying. They, if you start the biology labs, there's a corner and a long hallway before you get to the chemistry labs, another corner and another long hallway, and you get to the physics labs. And then it's another two hallways and two more corners before you're back at the biology labs. They couldn't be much farther apart than what they currently are. And although I've never taken a biology course here, I know that many students start out in the biology classes when they test into that level, so those classes are more likely to fill up than others and many students meet their basic science credit requirement in biology classes. Not many move on to take chemistry or physics or other science classes once they meet the requirement. My chemistry one class consisted of about 20 people. Chem two only had 10. Physics one had eight, and physics four only had four students, counting myself. Interest in sciences appears to be diminishing among students, and the classes are being deemed as too difficult by many. This new building will not only provide much needed classrooms and labs with new equipment, but it will also bring the different sciences together in one building and draw more attention to them. I believe that this building will spark interest and draw more students to the sciences, as well as encourage them to continue taking more science classes after they've met the minimum credit hour requirement for their degrees. I also believe that it will help SEC stand out to high school students who are looking to pursue a degree in science. Instead of looking over SEC and outdated labs, and they will see it on the same level as other universities and seriously consider it as an option. I also believe that new programs such as the engineering program will pair with the building nicely and draw even more attention to students at Southeastern. Another thing that would have been lovely for me to do part of. <laughs> I'm excited to not only see this building today, but to see what it will do for SEC in the future. Thank you all for your generous donations and continued support you've given to SEC for scholarships and to help make projects like this possible. For students like you've seen tonight, it just makes my job fun. I just have fun with the students. I really enjoy them, um, and, and it really makes it well worth it. Now, the next person that we've asked to come and say a few words um, doesn't really need any introduction, but we have celebrated her a couple times tonight. But I'd like for you, really from the bottom of your heart, to express your gratitude to Becky Rowe. and so amazing and really not necessary but let me tell you as I tell everybody I have been at SCC 31 years I think I said this two years ago I've been doing the same old thing for a really long time and until Dr. Ash and his wife and his team that he built came along we were not successful like this we did not I know how to start a campaign and I know how to stop one. <laughs> if anybody has a member. Um, so this has been the most fun ever. And to think that we're nearing this, this spot in the Building the Dream campaign is a little sad. So, um, you know, it's, we've had a lot of stuff going on. And I think really honestly it's just the beginning. Um, I'm, I'm considering myself clean up tonight because all of you have said so many wonderful things I've been going in my head. I don't need to say that. Say that. Everybody else has said it so beautifully, so beautifully. But the one thing I really, really want to say tonight, too, is thank you to Hi-V 
uh, Brent and, and Matt. Uh, Brent is an alum, I think Dr. Ash mentioned that earlier, uh, but they have, for the second time now, donated this gorgeous reception for us. And so the refreshments, the food, the beverage, except for the wine, which the foundation board purchased, uh, they'd be really, really sad if you all don't enjoy it, because if they have to wrap it up and take it home, or if, God forbid, some of us have to take it all home. Um, it's a really, it would be tough on our waistlines. So really, please enjoy yourself. Don't leave and don't be too polite. Just enjoy it. Um, I can't be happier to uh, be here with members of all of you with the, the Woody Foundation. Uh, Terry, you told the story beautifully. Dr. Ash, you did too. We did a big old happy dance when you called because we couldn't, we just didn't know where we were going to start. We didn't know what would happen. Um, we had to start somewhere, and you folks have been so generous. The history of their giving to SCC, I will make it short, but it's a long history. They started giving to us in 1954 when um, BJC, Burlington Junior College, went to its first individual building of its own outside of Burlington High School, they used to be SEC or BJC was on the third floor of Burlington High School. So when they grew up and went across the street at, to Saunderson, uh, which was a junior high, I believe, at one time, or even a grade school. Grade school. Grade school. Babs knows. So um, the Whitney Foundation gave us $100,000 to create a library in that basement so we could be like a real college. And then in 1989, when Jerry Jockins and friends came knocking and said, you people need a residence hall, which by the way, we are going to be continuing to keep it in, in continuous use. It will have a new life. We are not tearing it down right now. Um, the Woody Foundation came with another $100,000. And then when we needed to create uh, biology labs in what was then in 2000, 1994, um, the trustee hall, we needed to have those labs created, and they gave us another $75,000. So, and now a million dollars? This is just amazing. So I just, really, thank you. It, we couldn't be doing this without you. So name <laughs> so. It's pretty awesome. So, we have, we have been talking about the Matsons this evening as well, and, um, and you will be hearing from Lawrence um, as our last presenter this evening. I just have to say that the time that it took Lawrence to make his decision, he was the second ask, and that was three and a half million dollars, uh, was just a little over a day. And I was foolish enough not to look at my cell phone over the weekend, because on Monday he's calling me back and saying, "Did you get the message?" And I was like, oh, oh, "No, I didn't." So, thank you. I mean, it was so instantaneous. They have been giving us scholarship dollars since 2012, and honestly, those scholarship dollars were changing how we did business here at SEC. Lawrence said, "If you're really in the business of training people, you need to hoop up your programming," and so we did. We moved up the programming, and he's been in uh, contact with our faculty members. He certainly meets all of our students, and he gets to see, as m do many of you, when you come to our November scholarship reception, he and Marilyn both get to see the product again, our students, who are so grateful, just like Brittany and Emily, for all the support that they've been giving. It, it turns out it's like 64 scholarships, and it's um, all together, it's over $60,000 a year when you're talking about the various communities that he's assisting. So we thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> I'll also say that this gorgeous monument that uh, our students uh, alluded to behind us was set today at noon. <laughs> So you talk about another happy dance. Dr. Ash and I were just feeling like we were walking on air today. Just loving as well. So we're so grateful. And I do again want to say thank you to Dara, Dale Merrill of Liberty Ironworks. Chris Ritter. Chris, are you here? He was, yes. Chris, will you come waltzing out here? 
Chris Ritter has worked unbelievable hours. He just turned on his creative juices and he went to town. And, uh, and then he worked with Country Stonemasons and Country Landscapes, which was his first internship, actually, when he got out of college. So for him to work together with that group was really wonderful. Yeah. So we're so excited to see this piece out here. And I'm still trying to get Larry Jr. to give me a bill for the anchor chain out here. Each one of those links weighs 75 pounds. That is 750 pounds of chain in the middle of that. Piece. So, um, also, we have to say thank you um, to Great River Health Systems, the building right next door that's connected with the Skywalk. They were our third ask. So our biggest gifts came with our first three asks. And of course, we named the Health Profession Center for the Great River Health Systems in October of 2016. So um, all of you, Matt, Amy, all of you who were involved, if you'll wave your hand, stand up, say we're thankful. You. I have to say Kim Dow's on that board too, so she's had an impact on everything. It's been wonderful. Um, I'd also like to give a little shout out to Sherwood Company. They developed the gorgeous donor panel. If you get a chance, don't leave tonight after you've eaten all the food you possibly can. <laughs> Walk next door to the Health Profession Center. There is a gorgeous donor wall that Jeff Ebbing designed. Oh, wow. Jeff Ebbing designed it. Alyssa Weller, one of our own graduates of our interactive multimedia marketing program, actually did it. Uh, she is an employee at Sherwood Company, uh, just down the street, and she's been doing an incredible job for us, and it just got updated a few days ago, and so we're grateful for all of them. So you need to go take a look at it. Dr. Ash, thank all of our wonderful contractors. Please do again look at that poster. I'm so grateful to all of them as well. Our foundation board members, uh, many of them are actually on vacation right now, um, but if, uh, our foundation board members, there are 25 of them, and they were the ones who said, yes, we'll conduct the feasibility study, and yes, we'll be your fundraising arm, as long as the College Board of Trustees says, says yes, and they said yes. So we're really grateful to the Board of Trustees and to our foundation board. So please wave your hand if you're related to any of those boards, and we're so grateful. I didn't say that there are still naming opportunities. <laughs> I said that last time, there still are. Uh, we will name anything. We'll name the, <laughs> we will name the air. Uh, we are very grateful, uh, as you can see if you look on the side here, uh, that the Wig Camps recently also stepped forward. And I believe you're going to say something about that. So um, naming started at $1,000 with trees, $2,500 with benches, and then 5,000 for some of our smaller student collaboration areas, 10,000 for offices, and on up. And those, you will see, if you walk by a room and there's no donor name associated with it, by golly, it's still available. <laughs> and why should we still be raising money if we're close to the end of our campaign? Well, first of all, we're close to the end of our facilities campaign. We still have a little ways to go. And secondly, things change at a college all the time. Someone just said when they looked at the STEM room upstairs, oh my gosh, what a cool room. That's going to be outdated in a few years. And we said, yep, we are going to have to continue to buy new software, new hardware, and train our faculty all the time to stay current. So fundraising, as Julie Anderson knows with Coke Haven, I'm looking at her right there. Fundraising is never over. You always need to stay current. So I'm sorry if we seem a little redundant sometimes, but it's, it's an easy sell. When you are creating products like the students that spoke tonight, it is about the students. It is not about us. So let me just close right there and say thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, for making this job of mine the most fun ever and making it possible for these students to be able to accomplish, thank you, Chris Lidlack, their dreams. Thank you. the most amazing honor to introduce to you tonight, Mr. Lawrence Matson.
Thank you, Becky and, and uh, Dr. Reich. It's an honor to be up here. I uh, <clears throat> wasn't intended to be up here tonight. Becky asked me to say a few words. So I, uh, <clears throat> probably a lot of you know, I'm born and raised down here on uh, Banks of Skunk River uh, a long time ago, 89, 88 years ago, 88 and a half. So uh, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, we sat here tonight. Uh, 75, 80 years ago, my brother and I have probably been <clears throat> walking up and down the banks of the Skunk River letting that good old Iowa soil squeeze up between our toes <laughs> and uh, with nothing but a pair of cut-off jeans on. We spent a lot of time outdoors uh, wandering around the countryside, uh, never expecting to ever even uh, remotely think about it. Uh, doing the things that we've done, but uh, my wife and I have been <clears throat> blessed in the last uh, 30, 40 years <clears throat> of uh, developing a dredging company, and, and I sold out in, uh, in uh, 2010 for, <clears throat> like I say, so many times, more money than any demo I was born boy had ever <laughs> uh, have in his hands, and we've uh, <clears throat> we spent the last uh, 10 years, I guess it is, 8 years, uh, giving some of it away and uh, have uh, enjoyed every minute of it. We've made so many great friends up in Rochester, Minnesota, Mayo's, and uh, in the Quad Cities, at different hospitals and stuff up there, and, <clears throat> and here in, here in uh, Burlington with the Burlington Junior College. Uh, the, reception we have every year where we get to meet the students and the, and the parents of the kids that get our scholarships is, is really uh, a great event. And uh, the things that uh, Becky and, and Dr. Ash have done here I think is just absolutely remarkable. Uh, when they, I was probably one of the most critical ones when they mentioned to me back, what, four years ago, they said, with Dr. Ash, I met with them, and, and they asked me if they thought they could raise $10, $12 million. And I'd been remotely involved in a couple of big fundraisers up in the Quad Cities, and they find it almost impossible to raise $10 million up there for hospitals or anything else. And I told Dr. Ash, I didn't think he had a chance to uh, raise that kind of money here, but... Uh, Something about it. Snowball and hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, that's great. I, I, I didn't say that because my wife would have been on. <laughs> that's kind of like when I always tell the story about us walking to school, two miles to school, and my wife always says, Well, after I get through with that, she always says, Well, yeah, it's two miles uphill down, going to school, two miles uphill, it's coming back home. <laughs> And those stories get longer, and every year you grow older, I guess. But uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and, and also want to say that you know, if, if you have the money and can give some money to a scholarship or something, while well, you're still alive, so you can enjoy it, play, uh, do it, because you'll you will uh, get many rewards from it. Thank you very much. Well, it's been a, a most enjoyable evening. We just have a few more things, and then you'll be free to get some more of those snackies and goodies, as well as to explore the building even further. Uh, for those of you who haven't been through it at all, you could start anywhere and see it all just by walking in a circle and then coming down the stairs or up the stairs. Um, but before we get there, uh, Again, I, I really want this pay, uh, to, to pay special tribute to the Woody Foundation. I know that we have said that numerous times. So thank you again to the Woody uh, Foundation for your lead gift, your support. Really do, really do appreciate it. So 
Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, you just have heard from uh, Mr. Matson, and I think last time we were able to get Marilyn to say a few things. I don't know if she wants to say a few things. I don't know. Do you want to say a few things? Sure, she does. Yeah. 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 You know, when I graduated from high school 70 years ago, there was nothing like this offered. I did go to a junior club, and I'm here to tell you it was nothing like this. So congratulations to all you have done. You students are so blessed. Take advantage of it, go on with your lives, and return to the college all that you have received from them. It's a blessing to give. Trust me. Now, there's one more uh, special recognition that I would like to make tonight. Um, I began probably about two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, talking with this gentleman, and uh, we met, we had some lunch, and we were going to get back together, and then he went to Florida for, for the winter, and then he came back, and we had a few more conversations, and then I think he went to Florida again, and, and then when he came back from Florida, he said, I, I need to talk with you. So I went to his office, and we, we chatted, and he said, you know, we've, we've had a number of conversations, but I don't think I've actually said to you what we've been thinking about giving. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, you hadn't, but uh, uh, whatever, whatever you give, that would be just wonderful we just would receive it very graciously and, and be very appreciative of it but then he he started on the track of well it's not that big of a gift um, and he was referencing uh, uh, Lawrence and Marilyn Matson's gift of 3.5 and he said it's not it's not like the Matson's gift <laughs> and uh, I didn't think it would be that high but uh, uh, nonetheless he was sharing that from his heart, and so we chatted for a little bit further, and he said, uh, so I was really not sure what he was going to say next. So then he, he uh, looked at me, and he said, uh, my wife and I have decided to give the college $500,000. And that's uh, no, no small change. And so... <clears throat> So I'd like to have Rod and Deborah Whitcamp to come forward, please. Now, uh, with the gift that they gave, um, they were able to name the, the main entrance into the college, it's now Wood Camp Drive, and they also have named this floor. So this is named for the Wood Camps, Deborah and Rod Wood Camp have sponsored this floor. So we are so very grateful, thankful, appreciative. Just, I mean, they're wonderful folks, just great people. Uh, we so appreciate them. That they're representative of so many others that have helped us throughout this campaign. And so, with that, uh, Deborah and Rod, we would like to give you a commemorative gift of appreciation that names you as a bedrock donor for our campaign. So, thank you very, very much. We so appreciate it. Thank you.
when I hear Mrs. Matson say, give back. Behind is some memories. And after flunking out of Iowa State University, <laughs> Iowa State College, in 58, and I, my major was physics then, and that wasn't really me. But I was sitting in an economics class, the teacher was named Thompson, and I don't know whether it was daydreaming or, or whether it was part of the course, but I was looking out the window to the west, I remember that, and I thought, real estate is where it's at. <laughs> and you've heard me say that before. And so our gift is a little bit of a payback. Somehow that popped into my mind and it uh, has worked over the years. So <laughs> thank you very much. So some final comments. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Whitcamp. We so appreciate your gift, the Matsons, the Whitney Foundation, for all of the support from each of you who gave to our Building the Dream campaign, Building the Dreams campaign, and we so appreciate that. Uh, we're very glad that you're able to join us tonight uh, for this special appreciation of our benefactors, of our volunteers, faculty, staff, and students, and to the unveiling of this new science building that will complete the health science complex. We'll be taking some pictures here uh, in the lobby and would ask all the special guests and trustees to remain here while we get some pictures. Some of our science faculty are here. I see Dr. Snipes is up there uh, looking on. And we have a number of other faculty that are here. They'll be in their labs and we'll uh, explain what goes on in those labs and, and what's happening. So you're welcome to uh, engage uh, our faculty. Uh, we don't have all of our faculty here. That Some are away on family trips as they finish up their summer. Uh, on the second floor, we've got the STEM classroom, which is the one right up here, and that has 3D programming in it, and you will want to see that. It is really incredible, and uh, Chuck just told me a little bit ago that we have more features now on this one than we saw when they were first demoing it, so it's, it's already get, getting ahead of us, so we're pretty excited about that, and you'll want to see what the students will be encountering when they come in for classes here. And with the 3D, this, we don't have it upstairs, but we, we, we will also be able to have, uh, in Keokuk, as well as here, uh, a 3D unit that will be in our libraries. And the one in our library uh, here will have 3D welding on it. So you put the glasses on and you'll be able to weld with that, uh, with that wand. So it's really pretty incredible, we're pretty excited about that. Um, this is a self-guided guided tour, so there are no tour guides, but we do have students and faculty and staff that will be here to answer questions or give you guidance. Uh, use your maps that are in your program uh, to, uh, to, to guide you. And then as you, uh, if you need, there's a, a, a um, staircase at that end, staircase here, and if you need an elevator, as part of our cost saving measure. We use one elevator for two buildings. So you'll have to go across the walkway here into the second building to the health professions to catch the elevator to take you to the second floor to walk across. So we invite you to, uh, if you need an elevator, to, uh, to use that facility as well. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you come across, whether you're going this way or from the health professions back this way on the crosswalk, skywalk. Look, look to the uh, to the north out these windows, out to the south out these windows, and see this honor garden. It is just incredible. It's it's breathtaking. And um, I've just been handed something here. <laughs> <laughs> and and out here in this in this wonderful honor garden, as uh, we've already had. Uh, uh, we've already alluded to is this uh, monument that is representative of the college, both the sciences and the health professions, and that DNA incorporated into support by the Matsons. So that's out here. But we have some nice seating. We also have some nice pavers that people have donated and. 
as you look at that, and you may say, wow, I want to get a paper done. Well, we have, just happen to have, <laughs> we happen to have a brochure on how to do that. But we would love to be able to work with you on that and uh, help you uh, make that, that connection. And we can get that done fairly quickly for you as well. Uh, if you need any assistance, please let us know. After your tour, you're welcome to remain to take pictures, talk with friends, faculty, staff, students, uh, and to enjoy the refreshments. I also want to invite you to walk through this honor garden and, and really see it. See it up close. You can see it by the walkway and the skywalk, but please walk through it and really see it up close and personal. And that this really is a momentous day for the college. And I am so privileged and so proud to have been a part of the college and to um, be able to guide our efforts. But I'm telling you, it takes a team, a team of, of hard workers that give and they give and they give. And that can be both our donors as well as our faculty and staff. And why do we do all of that? It's about the students. And that's why we do what we do. So with that, I want to close and thank you again for coming. And I hope that you enjoy your, the rest of your tour of the facilities. And hope you have a great evening and safe travels home. Thank you so very much.